Hello everybody, behind me is a solar array of 5 kilowatts that I just finished building in a previous video, but it's not really well protected. If the wind gets too great, it potentially could blow over. So in this video, let's fix that. This solar array is over 5 kilowatts. I'm really proud of it, it's my largest array that I've built to date. Now I have over a thousand pounds worth of ballast in here so far. And last week we had a storm come through with 34 mile per hour gusts. And I was out here watching it in the rain because I just get a kick out of this stuff. But it didn't move and it didn't fall over. But that doesn't mean I wanna find out when it's gonna fall over. So we're gonna protect it. We're gonna anchor it to the ground in this video. Now this array so far, I've got about $2,000 invested in it. I bought used solar panels and I bought the steel left over from a large array that was built commercially. So I bought the steel at scrap steel pricing. In this video, I'm adding $50 worth of supplies to anchor it. Let's get going. So we have quarter inch by 100 foot galvanized wire rope. We have some clamps. These are called thimbles uh, and some of these but they're calling them ferrules in here. So I've used the clamps in the past, but I've never used these. So I'm gonna attempt to crimp these on, and we'll see if we can cut it using some bolt cutters. If not, I might have to take it inside and cut it with my bandsaw. But we'll find out as we get going. In preparation for building this solar array, I took out a couple of trees that were back here, including this oak. Now I still have this stump. It's right behind the solar array and it's about centered. Maybe 14 inches in diameter. It's an oak stump. Uh, oak stumps are really hard to get out of the ground. And I have some oak stumps in the ground here that were from the previous owner uh, and they're still solid. They're not rotting. Uh, so I don't know what it takes to get these things to rot, but they seem to last quite a while. I have a very long half inch diameter bit. So that's the hole that I drilled through. Now hopefully that's enough to get two quarter inch wire ropes through. If it's not enough, we'll have to do some more. These are some galvanized steel clamps that go around the two inch diameter poles right there. I have some left over from when we built the array. So I'm gonna take these and that's what I'll attach the wire rope to. This wire rope comes with one end already professionally crimped on here. So this is the end I'll put on first. Uh, then when we unspool it, we can see where to make the cut. Shortly after he went inside, but Eleanor continued out here helping me uh, with the wire rope because she had her insulated jacket on and insulation makes everything better. Here's our two halves and we'll just join them together like this. Kind of neat. And then these go around the pole. I'll use the end of the wire rope that was professionally done. We'll just put it in there like that. The nut that I'm using is a serrated flange head nut. All this hardware is galvanized. Now I don't want to cut it way down here close. I'm going to give myself some extra slack to work with. I'm just wrapping some electrical tape around. I don't want it to unravel when I cut it. Oh yeah, that worked really well. This is the end of the wire rope that goes up to the pole. Now before I put this through the stump, I want to add a few things. One of them is this piece of PEX. Now this is just some red PEX tubing that I have left over. Hopefully I don't snag myself uh, when walking by. <laughs> the other thing I want to add to the wire rope is this ferrule. Right. So now we are able to get that through. Now this is a half inch diameter hole, so I don't know if I'll actually be able to get two quarter inch wire ropes through there. I might have to drill two holes or widen this one. So I'm gonna push right now. And at this point, all right, I'm gonna go around to the other side and try pulling this. Nope, darn, pulled it right off. 
Well, that's not a problem. I'll just drill a second hole. The cable's through and I've pulled it a little bit. Here's that ferrule. There we go. Now the ferrule, I'm gonna slide down towards the stump, but the other end here, I'm gonna secure using just one of the clamps. So now with the clamp on, things aren't going to shift around. I'm going to add some tape to this end. Okay, so we got that taped up. Now I can actually slide this uh, red pipe down here. We're going to switch gears and work on the other corner of the array. Remember, this ferrule is still loose right now. I need to make a crimped end that's going to go on the other clamp for the other corner of the array. There we go. So we got it through with our really long loop here. So as, as we tighten this down, once we get it small enough, we'll put this in. The uh, thimble, they call it. So next we need to crimp this end. I don't have a specialized crimper for this, so I'm going to use my hydraulic crimper for electrical. Now it's always wrong to use a tool for something other than it was intended, but it's what I've got. So let's give it a shot and try. This is a 35 and it might be a little small. So let's try a next size bigger. What have we got? I got 50s in here. 50. So let's see what a 50 looks like. So these are 50. We'll probably give that a shot. Not sure how far down I need to go on this. So there's crimped partially down. I didn't bring the uh, crimpers all the way to a full solid. I mean that really feels solid now. Now I'm sliding this down. We'll do one more. Now I know that's wrong because I didn't use the proper tool. But let's, uh, let's go look at it compared to the other one. Now the factory crimp had three crimps and I only did two crimps, but my crimper is wider than the factory crimper they used. Both corners are running all the way back to this stump. They each have their own hole that they're going through. And I've got the cable clamp on each one. Right here and right there. But in both cases, the ferrule is loose. We're going to slide this down just a little bit. And I'm, I'm putting tension on everything when I'm doing this. Same on this side. Now I'm going to go up to these two corners and I'm going to tighten them down. So we're up here at this corner and it's running down to the stump. I want to make sure that this is in line with the stump so I'm going to shift it left to right as needed then finish tightening down the nut. So I'm looking to see if this is running 
in the middle. And it looks like it pretty is, pretty much is. It might be able to go just a little bit that way. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. I'll tighten that down now. With both corners lined up and tightened, I can now come over here and I'm going to keep pulling this down. As we pull it down, we're getting some tension on it. Now we're not looking to put so much tension on that we tip it towards the stump, just to protect it from blowing over in the wind. They were up here and we slid them all the way down towards the stump. That's why I gave myself so much slack. And for what it's worth, let's go ahead and check what the crimp distance here is. Uh, I got a new digital caliper that reads millimeters for all you guys in the, re in the rest of the world. For comparison, here is the factory crimp. And I think it's actually really tight right here. Yeah, 14 and a half. And now that's it. The anchoring of the system is done. We have the oak stump in the back and the quarter inch wire rope running up to the corners. Now, what's interesting is to see just how strong these are, which I'm about to show you. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and let me know how you would have done it in the comments below, given that this is a DIY system on a budget <laughs> using used equipment. All right, now if I pull on this wire rope, I can actually lift the front of the array. You see the front of the array? <laughs> I'm actually lifting it up.